like that. But, well, maybe you do because you keep letting your receivers go and you don't keep any kind of consistency for your quarterback. But there were still solid receivers there. That, uh, I, I just don't get it. There were still solid receivers available. There were difference makers available. I don't think Christian McCaffrey is that difference maker. But to a man, every an analyst that had something to say about it said it was a great pick. And uh, Mike Williams is gone right before them. The Chargers again, helping out the quarterback, getting a receiver for Phillip Rivers. The Titans helping out the quarterback, getting a receiver for Mariota. And, um, hell, the Jaguars helping out Bortles, who they're still not giving up on, and the media's not attacking by getting a running back like Fournette, which will help the team because he's a good player. But you get down to fucking Carolina. Mm with Cam Robinson still on the board. If you're going to get a running back that can catch out of the backfield and make a div difference, Dalvin Cook right there. And he can line up in the slot and catch passes, did it in college. Joe Mixon's right there. Deontay Foreman still there. Kaya still there. If you're going to do all that, if you're going to do that, you should have got a lineman. They needed that. And you get Christian McCaffrey. It's not an intelligent pick. And then you're going to pick up Curtis Samuel later in the draft. Motherfucker. And me and my cousin talked about this, and I see what they're probably trying to do from an offensive standpoint, but that's no different than what they've been doing. It's not worth the pick. I'm saying if you want to do that, that's fine, but you don't have to spend that pick on him. It's not necessary because he's not that dude. He doesn't have magic. He has athletic ability, speed. He's going to try hard, all that good shit, but he does not have magic. And Wiggle, he does not have that. Watch Samuel be more productive than Christian McCaffrey for less money and, and, a, and a lower pick. That's all I was saying from the beginning. That's why it wasn't necessary to get him, and they did it anyway. I don't know if that's panic, but I think that's a terrible draft pick on the part of the damn uh, Panthers. They, they don't seem to care about their damn quarterback, and if they did, I wish they did in the way that, they, that uh, Tampa Bay seems to care about theirs. They're actually picking up weapons and trying to help their quarterback out. They're keeping people that are productive and not letting them leave. They're actually caring and paying attention to the offense. I said it before the draft, and I'm saying it now. It made absolutely no sense to take Christian McCaffrey that high. Not for the needs on that team. You, It just makes no fucking sense. None at all. Not, not to me. Regardless of what they think they're going to do from an offensive standpoint as far as being dynamic, makes no sense to me. I, I, I don't understand it at all. Same damn player at a... Oh, Lord Jesus. I don't get it. I don't get it. I, re, I can't get over that damn... Okay, I'm, I'm going to quit bitching about that damn pick. Uh, the Bengals pick up a receiver, John Ross. Uh, they need help outside of... um. Really, T, am I blanking? Uh, Green, Green, A.J. Green. They need to the help outside of A.J. Green because, you know, teams can focus on him. And, you know, if you have somebody that's competent on the other side or that, or that can be a threat, it's going to help both of them be more productive. So, again, looking out for their team, study getting weapons for Andy Dalton, nobody of whom is saying they should try something different to get rid of him. He can, He's only so good. He's only going so far. You're not getting uh, any of that with him. Must be nice. Must be nice. Must be very nice. Uh, now we get to the Kansas City Chiefs who draft a quarterback. Smart move, I thought. Media didn't see it coming. I said here they have an opportunity to get two or three or four very good quarterbacks. Well, hell, really five. Watson was still available. Sean Watson was still available. Josh Dobbs was still available. Greg Evans was still available. There were still solid quarterbacks that could be picked up. And they chose Patrick Mahomes from Texas Tech. And uh, Andy Reid, again, sees a, the type of offense uh, Andy Reid runs. It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense if you look at the way he plays. And, again, a complete quarterback, just like Alex Smith can run but and probably has the ability to be a better throw. Alex Smith really can't get the ball to his receivers. He just started to do it last year. So I can definitely see him eventually having to relinquish that job, but his replacement definitely has been drafted. Not saying it's going to happen this year, but he's going to learn. He's going to get better, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but Patrick Mahomes definitely landed in a good spot for him, a uh, very good spot, solid team, solid defense, good offense. They can get this far with Alex Smith. Trust me, they can do a lot with Patrick Mahomes as well. Uh, great spot for him, man. Uh, he landed in a great spot. So being the second quarterback taken, 
going to the Kansas City Chiefs at number 10. Great spot for him. He has the opportunity to uh, really get his career started off and on a good note, being in a uh, position to w where he can really be productive, not falling into a terrible team and still being drafted within the top 10 of the draft. So uh, that's a good deal for him. Good deal for him. The Cardinals pick up a linebacker out of Temple, Hassan Reddick. Um, I, okay, we Alabama, uh, my man Foster. Really surprised, I guess, man, they had put out a lot of rumors about his shoulder not being healthy, and that's the reason why apparently he dropped. Really surprised, man. Really surprised. Thought he would have been, watching him play during the season, thought he would have been the first linebacker taken. But apparently a lot of teams were allegedly scared off by his injury. But Hassan Reddick, but from Tampa, Tampa, excuse me, I said Tampa, Jesus. From Temple, taken by the Cardinals, uh, solid pick, man. Just trying to beef up the defense. Uh, nothing really wrong with that. The Eagles. I was a little surprised here. Me and Microwave man was talking about this a little bit, man. I thought they would take a Dalvin Cook if he was there. You know, thinking that they needed a running back. Dalvin Cook again, right there, mixing right there. Uh, some difference makers available, and right there, and they chose to go defense. I, I was a little surprised. They went Derek Barnett from Tennessee, who actually is a good player, man. Defensive end from Tennessee, so I understand getting a good player. I just thought they would go offense because they have a fairly solid defense. I thought they would go offense, but apparently they didn't think it was worth it. But Dalvin Cook is a difference maker, man, and I'm shocked they didn't do that. That would have, <laughs> I'm, uh, well, I don't know. I, that would have really bolstered and or helped their offense, in my opinion, picking up a difference maker who can run and catch the ball out of the backfield. They already do it with a veteran, very productive veteran. who really at times last year saved them. Sproles saved them so many times last year. And you're getting a younger, more athletic, faster version of Sproles because he's healthy. You know, he's just younger and, you know, doesn't have as much wear and tear on his legs. And Sproles is very productive in that offense. And you get a chance to plug in a Dalvin Cook. And there was really no discussion about it. I just didn't get it. That they, they, they had a chance to get a difference maker on offense and let it go. Didn't understand, you know, I, I see him working, but I didn't understand that pick when you had a chance to get that type of difference maker. Really surprised. Really surprised. The Indianapolis Colts. Well, look at here. From the Ohio State University, Malik Hooker. Picked up by the Colts. You know, I think there were a lot of Buckeyes drafted, as there always is in these drafts. Nothing new there. A lot of Buckeyes drafted. A lot of talent. But Malik Hooker, Malik Hooker picked up by the Indianapolis Colts. First Buckeye off the board, if I'm not mistaken. Or was that the second? I'm sorry. Was that the second? Am I tripping? Was I glossing through everything? Yeah, yeah. Marshawn Lattimore went to the Saints. So my bad. No, no, I jumped ahead, didn't I? I jumped right past them. I jumped right past the Saints. I didn't even mention them, did I? I jumped right past the Saints. They went defense as well with uh, Marshawn Lattimore from the Ohio State University. I think I jumped past them. Okay, man. Yeah, we have some solid players. So, uh, the Saints looking to improve that horrific defense. And you can't go wrong with a Buckeye. I think I skipped right past them, man. I think I skipped right past them. I did, too. And I skipped past the Texans. I don't know how I managed that. And since I was talking about them, how about the Houston Texans, man? Great draft. Great draft. Got a steal in Deshaun Watson being the third quarterback taken, which is crazy in itself. And then on top of that, they end up with a Deontay Foreman. They pick up receivers to further improve the offense. And if I'm not mistaken, they got Greg Ward Jr., who uh, Greg O mentioned earlier, who was the quarterback at uh, Houston in college, uh, coached by Tom Herman from the Ohio State University. Yeah, we won the championship. Yeah, but um, he's our coordinator. But um, yeah, yeah, uh, the Texans, very solid draft. And I was definitely, I was shocked and surprised when they picked up Deshaun Watson, man. But he falls in a perfect situation due to great situation. Solid defense, great defense, solid offense, pretty good line. Uh, you got a bruiser and a great runner with already a pretty good line. Then you have a Deshaun Watson, who's a smart quarterback, who is a, a winner, who is athletic, who is accurate, who has a strong arm, and who has an opportunity to quarterback a team that got far on the arm of a guy that couldn't prove himself within the course of a season. So much so that they got rid of him after one year. So Deshaun Watson landing in a great position. So I guess the... Um, evaluation process as flawed as it is helped out a guy like him to land in this spot to where he can be on a productive team and compete day one that he gets up on the center so a uh, shout out to uh Deshaun Watson and the very underrated Deontay Foreman running back from Texas 
Those are extremely huge and solid ass picks. Damn, the Texans came up. They came up. Just with those two, they came up, but they came up. I don't know why I skipped past those and jumped right into these other picks. Uh, speaking of Alabama players, Marlon Humphrey from Alabama, cornerback, went to the Ravens. Nothing um, shocking there. The Ravens always get a solid defensive players, and they get a lot of them from Alabama. So nothing shocking there. A lot of teams seem to have that type of connection with certain schools. Jonathan Allen, also from Alabama, defensive end, went to the Washington team. Yeah, went to the Washington team, another solid player. I mean, again, you can't go wrong. Adoree Jackson, cornerback out of USC, went to the Tennessee Titans, man. Um, a guy that can return punts, makes a lot of plays. Again, another guy that was productive in college. And one of the main narratives I kept hearing was he doesn't have great footwork, but he still made plays. You know, still found a way to downplay what he did. But, again, picked up uh, by the Titans. Solid pick. Need, getting more help on defense and an athletic guy that can help out. Maybe uh, in some capacity on offense. And if not, he can return kicks and be a difference maker on special teams. So, solid pick for the Titans as well. Don't have a problem with that. Then we get to the aforementioned Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I, I don't know if I'm going to sit here and go through. Well, I guess I can. It won't take too long. I'll just do the first round, man. Just kind of get my little uh, picks about that. I might stop, man, after halfway, get a little uh, takes on it, a little uh, reaction before I go through the rest of it because I'm just running through this. So, I'm going to stop right here at the Buccaneers before I go any further. Picking up from Alabama, and a lot of fucking Alabama players and came off, ain't it? That was a whole bunch, huh? O.J. Howard. Damn. Tampa Bay is having one hell of an offseason. Tampa Bay is the antithesis to the Carolina Panthers when it comes to surrounding their quarterback with weapons. That's somebody you can get in the first round a difference maker. I just don't see Christian McCaffrey as that difference maker. I just don't see it. Jameis Winston now has picked up Deshaun Jackson in the offseason. Already has Mike Evans. Just picked up O.J. Howard. Has Vincent Jackson on the squad already. Has Doug Martin. Weapons galore. With a solid quarterback that can get on the ball. Almost made the playoffs last year. Fought to the end. Man, this Tampa Bay is going to be a fucking problem, dude. They're going to be a problem. And, uh, man, they're going to be a damn problem. That's a lot of weapons, dude. I don't know if people are really paying attention to how good O.J. Howard is. Alabama underutilized them big time. They did not really use that dude, dude. They did not really use that dude. They didn't use him. You know what I'm saying? So, um... They didn't really use that cat, man. And when he gets in a situation where he's actually going to get used, shit. Dude. Dude, I'm telling you. That, that, that's, um, and that's big. That's big. Tampa Bay again, man. Deshaun Jackson. Dude, they got Deshaun Jackson. With Winston throwing the ball. Taking the top off the defense, still running across the route. You got Mike Evans who has speed and can do the same as well. Then you mix in OJ Howard. Man, boy. Wow. Wow. That is some shit right there, man. That's some shit right there. Now, Tampa Bay, man, great draft. Great damn draft. <laughs> great draft, man. Uh, Gerard Evans. Gerard Evans. That's a quarterback from Virginia Tech. I keep fucking up his name. Gerard Evans. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, good player, man. Good player from Sluggo. Not really, not not really knowledgeable in the guys my Falcons selected, but I'll trust Quinn and company until they show me ineptness. Okay, okay. Y'all referring to the uh, Falcons in that draft from Sluggo? No excuses for Tennessee. It appears they are building a good team. Uh, yeah, it appears that way. Uh, from G Money Joiner. I'm not watching NFL this season if Kaepernick doesn't get picked up or if they pick him up late and cut him because I can't in good conscience, watch football without thinking about dead, unarmed brothers. You know what, Gary? That's very admirable. And you're a better man than me because I'm probably still going to watch, even though I'm going to talk shit about the fact that they're bullshitting um, Kaepernick and the fact that he hasn't been picked up because he dared, he dared to speak up on black people being killed and not being represented. Represented. And not being represented. Represented? Really, Ninja? 
A E I O U. Use your vows and not being represented in the justice system when it came to court rulings and or sentences, which most of the time didn't happen. 